everyone it is Danny and welcome to this update video this evening I hope you have been enjoying your Monday and a new tropical depression has formed in the Caribbean so that is tropical depression 21 which will be moving inland very very soon maybe later this evening headed to tonight or very early tomorrow morning so it has limited time over water and as such the National Hurricane Center is really not expecting any strengthening of the system nevertheless it is a significant rainmaker for portions of Central America so we'll be talking about that the rainfall total is expected and then we'll be looking at the entire Caribbean on a whole so uh, whatever is left of Tammy affecting the Lesser Antilles is slowly dissipating and conditions are improving so we'll be looking at the cyclone what could happen in terms of uh, this its future as we head into the next couple of days the potential impacts elsewhere and uh, overall we'll be talking about what is going on across the Atlantic Basin so let's get straight into it and we're kickstarting things here taking a look at the satellite imagery and we can see that there's still a lot of moisture out in the main development region so uh, there is a trough out there and that is helping to induce all of the activity all that convection we're seeing and then as we head to the vicinity of the Caribbean especially northeastern islands there we're seeing whatever is left of all that activity associated with Tammy which is impacting the islands so the hurricane is weakening a bit now but eventually it should make its way into more conducive conditions and that should allow for some re-strengthening but it is not expected to become a major hurricane or a cat to even so it might peak again with winds of 85 miles per hour we'll go on to the cone forecast for it in a moment but going into the vicinity of other areas such as Trinidad there was some thunderstorm activity earlier even uh, across portions of Puerto Rico Hispaniola some sections of Jamaica especially for southwest parishes unfortunately for most of us it has been a pretty hot and dry day also windy across some areas similar story for portions of Cuba eastern Cuba some thunderstorms popping up much not happening for the Cayman Islands but there's some convection nearby so maybe later today there could be some showers or thunderstorms across the islands and over in some spots across Central America but then as we head down to the vicinity of Nicaragua there we can see all that activity associated with tropical depression 21 we'll be talking more about it soon and then as we head to the ABC Islands unfortunately nothing much happening and then down in northern South America across many areas some thunderstorms developing so with all that daytime heating and all that moisture we see some activity within the area and then of course for the Leeward Islands headed toward uh, the Virgin Islands in eastern Puerto Rico there could still be some additional rainfall and thunderstorms induced by Tammy but as I said conditions will be improving as we head through the week now as it relates to tropical depression 21 let's go ahead and now take a look at what the National Hurricane Center is expecting so we're going on to the cone forecast and here we can see that the depression is sustaining winds up to 30 miles per hour and it has that well-defined center so it has reached the threshold to be considered as such it was previously known as invest 95 L and so it is as I said earlier it's going to be moving inland very soon later today most likely and then in terms of all the rainfall activity for some parts of Nicaragua there there could be four to eight inches of rainfall with isolated totals of 12 inches so that is the maximum expected as the system makes its way in and then for portions of Honduras there could be two to four inches with isolated totals of six inches of rainfall across some areas these are flood triggering totals here so for some areas especially over the eastern side of the territories there's likely to be a lot of heavy rainfall and even mudslides in those uh, hillier areas are more mountainous areas as well so that is going to be a very big concern as depression 21 is going to be making its way in and again it is unlikely to strengthen because of that very short window of opportunity it has or that very small window of opportunity so if it was going to be remaining over water for a bit longer then that would allow it a better opportunity to acquire the next name on the list which is Vince but that seems unlikely however we could still see some development in the vicinity of the Caribbean later this month headed toward next week models are hinting at an area of low pressure forming and uh, we could see another storm very very soon but now let's go on to some model data so first we're looking at the intensity guidance we can see that for the most part models are not expecting that it will reach tropical storm status there 
there are those lines which represent the different models and then that green area represents tropical storm force winds and there we have the time down there on that horizontal line so as we head uh, into the next couple of days once it moves over to the eastern pacific it might have a pretty good shot at becoming a tropical storm in that basin but again the immediate concern is the heavy rainfall and potential mudslides uh, that the system is likely to trigger that flooding as well so if you're to be affected by this please stay safe please do not take any unnecessary risks so that is what is to expect with the system and then as we head on to Tammy, now let's go on to it. So as I said earlier, Tammy has weakened a bit. Maximum winds are now 75 miles per hour. Those are maximum sustained winds. So it is encountering some unfavorable conditions now. But as we head into the next couple of days, it may try to re-strengthen as, as, uh, as soon as tomorrow evening. Those winds might go back up maybe to around 80, 85 miles per hour. And uh, that could be the peak intensity of it. And then we're seeing that as we head to this weekend, headed towards Saturday, the system could make its way very close to Bermuda as a post-tropical cyclone. Post-tropical means it's going to be losing its tropical cyclone characteristics, but uh, eventually it could bring those impacts, those gusty winds, those seas getting a bit rough out there, even a bit of storm surge and some periods of heavy rainfall. And then we see this track going off to the west here, although with the recent model guidance, let's go on to that uh, track guidance we're seeing here, that models want to show a turn to the west and then back out. So we'll have to wait and see. As I've been saying, there's a lot of uncertainty with what could happen with the system so uh, only time will tell but we'll have a better picture of what's ahead we'll see what the consensus is as we're going to be heading into the next couple of days now looking at the sea surface temperature map for the Caribbean I have spoken about it this morning and I'm speaking about it again that uh, conditions are expected to be conducive enough to allow for development so this is an area to watch and the Caribbean is an area to watch for development in the latter part of the hurricane season so once the upper level winds are conducive as well as a lot of mid-level moisture is present and we know that the waters are very warm to support all those thunderstorms to boost all that activity then we will definitely see development and I really think that we could see a couple of systems before this hurricane season ends maybe anywhere from around two to three maybe even four systems before the season ends and I wouldn't completely say that there is going to be no development in December because again we know that it has been a very hot year the waters are also very warm, anomalously warm at that. And as a result, uh, they don't just cool down very, very quickly across the tropics. So uh, if the shear is conducive and we have these fronts moving out, at the tail end of the fronts, these low pressure areas can form and we could see development even of subtropical cyclones in December. It has happened before. There have been storms in uh, December. So we'll definitely have to look out for that this season with these very warm waters out there because that is the primary fuel for tropical cyclone activity but we know that other conditions have to be conducive to really allow for them to uh, get going. So we'll definitely have to watch out for that as we head into the next several weeks. But as you know, I'm here to keep you posted and posting twice a day, and I will continue to do so as necessary. But uh, here we have another concern, Depression 21, which is a threat to Nicaragua and portions of Honduras. So winds may be very gusty, and there may even be a little bit of surge with those rough seas along the coast. At the same time, the main concern is the water uh, as a result of the expected heavy rainfall. And so guys, that is pretty much what I wanted to share with you in this update. So I trust and hope you found it to be quite informative. However, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'll respond to you once I get the chance to do so. And remember to always be weatherwise.